Guys, today I'm showing you how to do uh, a pretty cool wiring mod. It's how to wire up a phase reverse switch inside your guitar. Um, the guitar in question for this video is a Les Paul. Um, so if you're watching this video, uh, it will work with any guitar that has a two volume, two tone setup. Um, so what is a phase reverse switch? Essentially, um, when you activate the push pull pot, it uh, reverses the polarity of uh, the pickup. Um, it doesn't matter which pickup it is, um, you can do it to either pickup, um, neck or bridge. Um, in this in this setup, we're going to be doing it on the bridge pickup. What that does though, as soon as you put one of the pickups, when you reverse the uh, polarity of one of the pickups, it puts both pickups out of phase uh, with each other. Um, and what that does is it gives um, a pretty unique, um, a slightly thinner, um, hollow sounding um, tone, but the beauty is there's no real, real loss of volume. So it's it's actually quite um, a very useful mod. Uh, it's obviously synonymous with uh, one or two players, uh, most notably Peter Green, uh, Brian May from Queen. A lot of the solos on Queen songs are played uh, with the pickups out of phase. And of course, uh, Jimmy Page had a, uh, a wiring model like this as well, just, just, just for the out of phase setting. Obviously with the Peter Green, um, tone, a lot of people will know a lot more about me than this, but he actually achieved the, the tone by, uh, flipping the magnet of the neck pickup. Um, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be doing it via uh, a soldering iron and, and a push pull pot. Um, it's not quite the same, but um, it's it's close enough. So, okay. With no further ado, I'm going to pop these into the template, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so uh, it doesn't really matter which pickup you choose to put out of phase. Uh, some people will do it in the neck. Some people do it in the bridge. Uh, for the purpose of this video. I'm doing it in the bridge position. Um, we're also going to be doing this um, in the 50s style wiring. Um, seems to be very popular. Um, but you can of course do it in the typical um, typical modern wiring or however you prefer. Um, so we'll start off with a bit of grounding. So on your volume controls, we're just going to ground these lugs here just by filling the eyelets with uh, solder. And on the tone controls is the middle one. Just let it cool. By the time you come back to these, it will be cool enough. Uh, you're just going to bend it onto the back of the pot casing. And then just heat it up again. Flow in a bit more if you need to, and that will ground that lug to the pot casing. Same again on the other volume. Same again on the tone. bend it back, reheat it up. Now this is why guys, if you do use lead free, you need this um, added silver. Because lead free <laughs> doesn't flow anywhere near as well. Um, and again on the push pull tone, it's the middle. Um, I've done it off camera already. Oh, there you go. Um, just connect a jumper wire from that lug to the side of the pot casing. Okay, next I'm going to go through the, the specifics of the push-pull pot before we crack on and put the capacitors and finish off the ground wire. Okay, so I always recommend when you're working on individual push-pull pots that you literally work on them individually as I have here. Um, it's just a makeshift template. It's um, sat on a, it's just a, a square template with a hole in the middle which sits on top of an empty sellotape roll, just elevates it. 
Uh, the reason being, if you try and do this with all the other pots around you, um, it gets messy. These are obviously plastic. Um, you, you can burn them, it's not going to do too much damage, but you don't want to burn them anyway. Obviously with these pots, um, if you saw our, one of our recent videos on how to wire CTS push-pull pots, um, the only ground, the only place you can do any grounding is on the, the pot casing. Obviously you can't solder to the, the black plastic. Um, and you're obviously soldering into these holes which correspond to the six pins above. So whilst the diagrams on your screen will be um, corresponding with these six pins, that's the layout of a, a classical push-pull pot, we're going to be doing it in these holes here. So I hope that's nice and clear. And um, obviously the diagrams uh, will be showing you every step that we're doing. So like I say, I've already grounded the middle lug of the this tone control to the pot casing. Um, so generally for phase reverse, we need to have a couple of crisscross wires going on to uh, over the push pull pot. So I'm just going to take some of my tinned copper. And we need to ground terminal four. So we need a jumper wire from terminal four, which is this hole here. We're going to connect a wire ground, grounding that to the, the pot casing. You'll see here that I've scuffed it with a bit of sandpaper. Uh, the reason being some of these push-pull pots come with, um, <laughs> I guess I call it an anti-solder coating. It's an anti-corrosion coating. Um, but if you haven't got a very powerful soldering iron, um, just um, scuff it up, not too much and be careful, but it just makes it a lot easier to uh, solder. Otherwise it just rolls off everywhere. And then we also need to connect did that same hole, let's try and get into focus, that same hole we need to connect down to terminal one. So it's going diagonally downwards and that is this one here. So we're just going to put um, a continuous wire. I'm going to thread that through the hole. And we're going to ground it to the pot casing. I'm just going to turn the soldering iron up. Just like that, we are obviously going to solder terminal four. Like so. And this is an essential, but I do recommend it nonetheless. Take some tubing, feed it down and shrink it. Snip to length, uh, typically you don't want to leave much on at all, but enough to fit it in the other hole and solder. And like I say, this is going into the one on the uh, diagonally opposite, so hole number one, which is that hole there. So we're just going to twist this round. Push it in. And again, we're going to solder that in place. Like 
like so, let it cool. You can then obviously bend this out of the way, but we'll do that in a sec. And then we need another diagonally wire, ooh, diagonal wire. Going from bottom left, number three, diagonally opposite upwards at number two. So that's a jumper wire on these pots. Let's bend that down for now. Between number two and number three. Now, in hindsight, I should have done number two, this, <laughs> this one first, but doesn't really matter. And then at the same time, we're going to have a wire coming from hole number two, which will be going to our volume input. So, bit of bit of cloth wire or any wire, doesn't matter what colour. So put your jumper wire into number three. Yeah, definitely should have done this the other way around, but never mind. Solder that into place. Just like that. Again, cut to length. Obviously this is a lot smaller and it's only going a few mil across, but don't be deceived. You need more than you expect. Uh, again, not needed, but I'd strongly recommend it when you've got so many wires coming from the same connections. Put some cloth wire on. Uh, excuse me, some rubber tubing. Again, shrink that down. So this is a bit fiddly now, so we need to get a better angle so the end of that wire that we've just put in we need to bend it round and solder it into number two with a length of cloth wire or whatever wire you're using that's going to run to the volume control so i'm just going to bend this round and push it in And then force in my just like that. Oh, just trying to get some focus. And we're just going to bend that away from the the lugs at the bottom okay cool so now we'll put this in the, the rest of the circuit with the other pots we'll finish off the the grounding and then we'll hook everything up okay so our phase switch this wire here that we've just put in is going to the input of the uh the volume control so that's nice and simple Gonna snip that to length. Like so. Um, we're going to put in our capacitors. Uh, 
Um, you can use whatever value you want. Uh, typically with humbuckers and 500Ks, uh, I guess typically you'd use uh, 0 0.022, but you can use whatever you want. So like I say, we're doing 50s wiring. So that's um, the capacitor runs from the middle, uh, the output, the middle lug of the volume control. And that's going to the, uh, can't see it on camera, but this lug on the, the other side, um, we'll do it on the volume, uh, the net controls first. So middle terminal here to the tone lug on the opposite. Just like that, and then we'll do exactly the same on the bridge. Okay, so here's the completed kit. Um, all I've done off camera is put the connect the four pots to each other, um, f uh, ground wire. Um, the capacitors are in. Um, now I'm going to put it into our Epiphone. Um, I'll show you uh, exactly where your pickups go, especially on the push pull pot and the switch. Uh, jack remains the same, so we shouldn't have to touch that at all. And then we'll plug it in and uh, give it a give it a test drive. Okay, so everything's been soldered in. I'll just give you a quick overview of what goes where. So these are uh, House of Tone four conductor wire pickups, uh, which is exactly the same color coding as Seymour Duncan. So if you're using Seymour Duncan, you do it this way. If not, uh, I'll put a link to a color code chart below, just so you can. Uh, you you just need to work out what wire goes where. So um, for the net controls in our case, um, so basically the, the controls where you don't have the push pull pot, it's everything gets installed as it would do typically in your Les Paul. So your uh, white and red wires. So that is the north finish and south finish. Uh, they get soldered off, soldered, um, soldered together and taped off, excuse me. The black wire goes to uh, the volume input as normal that is the north start and the green and the ground so the south starts and the bare wire uh, get grounded to the pot casing as well uh, your toggle switch goes in as normal to the output of the volume control that's the same for both sides um, for the control with the push pull so the bridge controls in our case um, again the white and the red so the north finish and the south finish get uh, soldered together and taped off. This is where it gets a bit interesting in the push pull pot. So the green wire, so for Seymour Duncan, that is the south start, that goes into hole C2. So that's the middle, you'll see the diagram on your screen, it's the middle pin on the left hand side of the push pull pot, but on the CTS it's uh, hole C2. And the black wire, which is the north start, goes into the hole directly opposite c1 which again is the middle nib on the right hand side uh like i say the uh north finish and south finish get taped off together and the ground goes to ground as normal okay so that i hope that's nice and clear you can follow the diagrams on your screen if you get a bit lost um let's plug it in and see how it all sounds right so i'm just gonna have a quick noodle the bridge tone control is our phase reverse switch uh it's important to remember that both pickups do need to be selected so if you're having it in the neck or the bridge uh, there'll be no difference in time whatsoever so it does need to be in the middle 
um, and then we'll have a play around and see how it all sounds. <laughs> There you go. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Um, I really like the sound of that. Um, there's um, a nice, um, clear difference between the two, uh, which is obviously what you always want to look for. Um, but unlike maybe coil splitting or series parallel, there's very little volume drop. Um, so I think I'll be having a bit more of a play around with that. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, all the wiring diagrams that you've seen um, and the main diagram for this video is on our, our website. I'll put a link to it in the uh, in the description below. Um, keep, keep safe everyone, stay at home and we'll see you next time.